with an opening statement, then use the raise your hand function and we'll get to your questions. You're good coaching, go ahead. Okay. Good, I hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, look, you know, it's uh, been a, a while coming, uh, but every team now has the opportunity, our team has an opportunity to sort of create an identity of, you know, who this team wants to be. Uh, I think that identity gets created by, you know, the standard of effort, the standard of toughness, the, the discipline to execute uh, and do it on a consistent basis. And, um, you know, I'm very proud of the way our team has sort of managed some of the uncertainties leading up to this season. Um, but, you know, we're obviously excited about having the opportunity uh, to play against, against a very good Missouri team um, who got off to a great start last year and starting out 5-1. and one, They're a bowl team. Uh, they've got eight starters back on defense, uh, four on offense. They've got a new coach. Uh, Eli did a great job at App State, you know, winning the Sun Belt last year um, and, you know, going to a bowl game. So, um, you know, this is a, a very good team with a lot of experience coming back, um, especially – you know, on defense where they have eight starters returning and uh, they were like 14th in the country or something last year in defense. So uh, this is a very good defensive team, very challenging team. Uh, we've got some really good players um, on offense. Um, you know, I think they're two quarterbacks. They haven't really named a starter, but I think both guys are very talented, um, be very challenging for, you know, our defensive team. Uh, not knowing for sure exactly what we're going to see um, from them. Uh, both guys are extremely talented at quarterback. They have a good running back in round three. I um, think they got a couple starters back in the offensive line, a couple receivers uh, that are talented guys and the transfer that will, you know, sort of add another starter to, you know, to that group. Uh, they do have to re re replace their punter and kicker. They have a couple new specialists, but you know, Beatty's a very explosive guy, you know, in the return game. So, um, you know, very challenging game for us to start out in the SEC against a, you know, bowl team uh, that uh, has a lot of experience coming back, a new coach. And, um, you know, we just have to get our guys to prepare uh, the, the way we can and be able to make ad adjustments and adapt, it, and adapt to what happens in the game um, when we need to. So. We're excited about having the opportunity to play. Uh, I'm excited about having the opportunity. All the things that we've done is, you know, to try to give the players an opportunity to do this. So we're really excited that, you know, that opportunity has finally come this week. Okay, we will uh, start things off with Cecil Hurt. Thank you. Yeah. Put your mask down, Cecil. We can hear you a little better. Thanks. Yeah, Mac has had a really good camp, uh, really played well in the last scrimmage. Um, done a good job of taking a leadership role. I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. I think our players have confidence in him. Uh, so, you know, we're pleased with his development. Uh, I think it's important that, you know, Mac plays within himself, executes what we need him to execute in terms of distributing the ball and uh, just do his job. And uh, I think the players around him know how important it is for them to do their job so the quarterback can function effectively. And I think it's going to be a combination of uh, all the guys that we have, because we do have some experienced players on offense that um, are very capable of uh, doing things the right way. So it makes it a little easier for the quarterback. But I will say again, you know, our entire offensive group is going to get challenged by a very good defensive team. OK, we'll go to Mike Rodak next. Nick, there's been various signs and, and demonstrations that NFL players, NFL teams, NBA players have made over the last couple months. And just was curious, how aware are you of, of anything your players might have planned uh, for Saturday's game? Well, we really haven't discussed anything to this point. Um, 
you know, I think that we've always tried to represent the University of Alabama together as a unit. Um, so uh, any talk of anything that we might do, it would be something that we would want to do as a team. Uh, there hasn't been any discussion about any of those things at this point. Uh, to this point, uh, we do have an SEC shirt, uh, togetherness shirt that you know, all the players are going to receive and uh, can actually wear in pregame if they choose to. Okay, now next we will go to um, Dennis Dodd. Nick, you've all, always been an advocate of nine conference games. Do you think this season at the end of the day might, might be an inspiration for that or might push it that way? Well, I, I certainly think that playing 10 conference games uh, makes it very challenging for the players, uh, makes it very challenging for our team. Um, you know, as I look at the AP poll or whatever, you know, we're playing five, six, seven teams that are mentioned in that, depending on which one you look at. So uh, it's very, very challenging, but I think it's a great opportunity for players to be able to compete. Uh, I've always been an advocate of playing more games so that every player gets to play every team in the East. and. Uh, this is certainly going to create that opportunity to a large degree uh, for a lot of our players, but um, I can't really answer, you know, how it'll impact the future. Uh, I think a lot of it'll be determined by, you know, how this season goes. We'll go with John Zener at the AP. Uh, yeah, Nick, I, I actually had a couple of quick ones. One, is there anybody that you know for sure that, that you're willing to share that's out because of COVID or injury or anything? The only guy that we have out due to injury is um, R Ronald Williams. Is um, fractured his arm uh, in practice about a week ago, so we know he he's out for the game. But other than that, um, we we don't have anybody who's out for sure. But you know we're testing every day, so that's kind of an ongoing process as to how that goes. And, and a follow-up to Cecil and Mac. how has he kind of grown and built on all the experience he got to get in unfortunate circumstances late last season? Well, I, I think obviously the more knowledge and experience you get from playing, um, the mistakes that you make and the good plays that you make uh, all sort of help you develop confidence and um, sort of increase your chances of playing with consistency by making uh, better choices and decisions. So. Uh, I think that shows in Max play, and um, you know we're very confident that he can do a good job for us. Okay, we'll go to Tony Sakalas. Yeah, Nick, um, you have two starter, uh, two freshmen listed at starter on defense. How confident in in their ability are you heading into the season, and what have they really shown you um, in camp? Well, in Will Anderson and Malachi Moore and. Right. Well, you know, both players have um, had really good camps. Uh, they're very, very um, good competitors. Uh, football's important to them. Uh, they're smart. Uh, they were able to learn and grow, you know, in the system uh, very quickly. Um, and we needed some players to come through as young players in certain positions. And uh, these two guys certainly, you know, did that and did a very good job. So. I'm sure this first game is going to be um, a, a challenge uh, in terms of their opportunity to go out there and stay focused on, you know, doing their job. And um, you know, we're going to help them every way that we can so that they can, you know, play well. Okay, we'll go, to Brett Hudson. Hey, coach, I'm curious in a season where you're having to evaluate teams more subjectively for a, a college football playoff. How can you do that without? incentivizing running up the score on teams? Or, or what would you like to see as a criteria to judge teams more subjectively in a strange sample size? Uh, I don't really have the answer to that. Um, you know, my job is to get our team to try to play the best they can every week, uh, every game. Um, you know, I, I don't envy the people who um, have the challenge of trying to, you know, make those evaluations. But uh, I still think that there's things like you know, sportsmanship and having respect for your opponent um, in a lot of different ways that, um, you know, it shouldn't be about how bad you beat someone, but actually, you know, how well do you play, you know, on a consistent basis. And uh, we've got a lot of qualified people in positions to try to do that. I just think because everybody's not playing the same number of games and 
Um, you know, some teams are playing conference games. I think strength of schedule is going to be, you know, really difficult uh, relative to different conferences and who plays who. Uh, so I just think some of those things probably make it a little more difficult uh, when everybody's not playing a 12 game schedule and uh, a championship game or whatever. But I don't really have a solution. Um, I just know that there's a lot of good people who do the best they can to try to get the best teams uh, based on you know their full body of work in terms of what they were able to accomplish during the season. Okay, we'll go to Jeff Spiegel next. Nick, when you guys take the field Saturday, how happy will you be for a guy like Dylan Moses who has fought so hard to get back and, and play this weekend? Well, I, I think that you know one of the reasons that it was so important to us, to me personally, uh, is for the players to be able to come back and play and create value for themselves. And, you know, in a, in a case like Dylan, who missed last season due to an injury, um, probably even more important to a guy like that to be able to come back to gain confidence, to show people that he's uh, healthy and the same kind of player or better than he was before. Uh, I think that's something that um, is really a positive thing for him and something that as a coach, you know, you always feel really good about uh, seeing guys be able to uh, sort of get rewarded for all the hard work they did to be able to come back, uh, lead the team, uh, and uh, be an outstanding player and have a great year and create value for themselves. We'll go to Michael Casagrande. And yeah, Nick, just wonder about the receivers and the competition there. I see John Mechie was at the uh, top of the depth chart for the other position. Just how has he done and how those other guys competed with him? Uh, he's done well. Um, you know, I think the entire receiver core, you know, Smitty and Jalen Waddle have been outstanding, you know, through through camp. Um, you know, I, I think all the other guys have made significant improvement. Uh, John Mechie got to play some last year and uh, I think, you know, has continued to progress. And, um, you know, some of the younger players are creating a lot of competition at the position. Um, so, you know, that that those guys are going to be a bit of a work in progress as we go through the season in terms of their ability to improve. And uh, But we need them to uh, be able to become what we would call, you know, consistent performers as starters uh, when we need them. Because uh, I, I think depth at that position is really something that we need to continue to work to develop. OK, we got time for two more. We'll go to James Ogletree. Go ahead, James. Hey, Coach. Missouri has talked about wanting to have a downhill power type running game and with a mobile quarterback with some experience and some experience in their backfield as well. Just wanted your thoughts on their running game and what they might try to do on offense as a whole. Well, if you look at what they did at Appalachian State, they were an extremely effective you know, running team. Um, had a very good back, uh, ran it inside, ran it outside, ran it on the perimeter, um, and also featured quarterback runs, you know, in terms of what they did, um, which, you know, always sort of creates a little bit of an extra gap on defense that everybody's got to be uh, conscious of, you know, trying to fit. Um, so uh, they also had a, made, made a lot of explosive plays in the passing game because, as you well know, when you can run the ball effectively, play action passes, RPOs, uh, all those things sort of fit right into how you attack people on the perimeter, which I thought they did an outstanding job. And um, I would assume that depending on who plays quarterback for them, they'll be doing some of those same things. OK, we'll finish with Edwin Stanton. Go ahead and unmute Edwin. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, go ahead, Edward. Hey, Nick. Uh, just want to talk about uh, Matt Jones and Devontae Smith and just what they've done this preseason to work on their relationship and to be more of a dynamic uh, receiver-quarterback combo this year. Well, um, you know, I, I think that Smitty's been pretty dynamic um, regardless of who's played quarterback, and he's been a great leader on our team. And um, I don't see um, – I haven't seen any changes in that. Um, so – uh, I don't really know exactly how to answer your question. Uh, I think that those guys work well together. Uh, we had a lot of work this summer where the receivers all work with the quarterbacks and 
Uh, they all improved and developed. And for a long time, you know, we had to do a lot of stuff on air because we couldn't do things face to face. So I think, you know, all those things contributed to those guys developing the kind of relationships and trust in one another that helps you have, you know, a very good passing game. So, uh, and I think that having that kind of balance on offense will be really important for us. And um, it's going to be important for all the receivers to play well. But uh, Smitty has been a guy that you can always depend on that you're going to get his best effort. And uh, he's going to go out there and play and compete like, um, you, you, you know, you really would like to see every player do. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Guys, we'll be back with the players here in a few.